the internet as we know it today, it's not a force of nature. It's not like water or the air. It just is the way it is. You know, what you can do with the internet, how, how it works, is the result of decisions made by programmers, by engineers, by legislators, by regulators, by all kinds of different people who use and control different parts of the internet. Most of the governments are now aware of the power of the internet and how much of a threat it causes to them. Because governments can lie and say there is nothing happening and we did not suppress and we did not repress. And then there are those people, just normal citizens who have their mobile phone, who have captured what really happened. People who are creating stories, um, very local stories, very personal stories about what is happening in their communities, and they're able to share them on a platform that's quite global. We, we were hoping to raise awareness about what was going on in Morocco, because it didn't make uh, the major stories on Al Jazeera, etc. Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, for obvious reasons, uh, attracted most of the attention. But at the same time, the government continues to censor and filter information online and the next step is they are actually harassing and arresting activists and bloggers and this has been going on and it increased over the past few over the past 18 months of the Arab Revolution. At the moment in Pakistan uh, Baloch websites, Balochistan is a province in Pakistan, it's one of the largest provinces and there's been separatist movement um, in, in that part of the province because of uh, government's negligence over the years. So intelligence agencies have been involved in brutality, they've been involved in abduct, abducting and torturing citizens. But you see a media blackout. The only way that these news can come out is the social media and social media has been used very effectively because what they do is they don't only report the deaths, they actually take pictures of the dead body and the ways that they be mutilated and they put it online. Um, those websites are blocked completely in Pakistan. But it's not legitimate for a government to restrict criticism just because they, they want to stay in power, they don't want to be embarrassed. Some countries have blocked live streaming. So if there is a protest, before you were able to live stream it, now you cannot live stream it. While the government was trying to ban pornography, what happened was that they censored the term breasts, which meant that medical students could no longer research breast cancer and other, other such terms as well. You need to know that not everything in the world is on the internet. And some reasons, some things are not there because somebody is deciding that it should not be on there. I, I think one of the big issues is in a lot of countries, the government puts legal pressure on internet intermediaries, the, the websites, the ISPs, to basically enforce the law. And if they don't enforce the law through their private means, self-censor, then they can be held responsible. Our struggle for free flow of information was portrayed as if it was to promote pornography. So I, I think many people who uh, use internet they, they think somehow it is free um, because much of the content is free and therefore they think it is also free of controls. And the problem with internet censorship, you cannot see that the information is being filtered. Uh, so it, it's not like in a newspaper, if there's a, a story is removed, then you have a black hole or a white space in the newspaper. On the online, it's just not there, but you don't know it's not there. Or you, you try to make a search and it says, uh, Error 404 or something like that. This is a human right violation. This is undemocratic. This is not right. Those gatekeepers who are making the decisions before you as the consumer make the decision. And we see this happening across the region, not only in one country or another, and not only in the Middle East, but around the world as well. When people say you need to cry, fight crime on the internet, you know, many parliaments and legislatures are responding by saying, okay, then we need more surveillance. It's, it is a question of balance, but the biggest problem in the world, online, offline, is there is not uh, freedom of expression. So therefore, we must start that the most important thing is not to bring the limitations, but to promote the freedom of expression. The biggest problem is not the abuse. 
of freedom of expression. The biggest problem is that freedom of expression is not being tolerated. If we want the internet to be compatible with democracy, if we want the internet to be compatible with our rights and with the kind of society we want to have, we have to work for it. We need a global movement, global internet freedom movement.